This is the start line of Grandma's Marathon. That is in two Saturdays from today. Uh, I am in Two Harbors, Minnesota. Actually just did some donor work, some work uh, for Lutheran World Relief and was coming down the scenic Highway 61 and I thought it would be cool to stop at the Grandma start. I am not running Grandma's this year. Uh, that was on my list of things to do. Uh, for a couple reasons I am not. Uh, for one, I haven't been running at all. Uh, but probably more importantly, because I probably would have gotten into some running shape, um, the the marathon filled up really early. I think it was full at like Christmas time, which is extremely early. So about the time when I felt like I could have started doing some longer runs, uh, I wasn't able to get into the race. So I, so I never did. But this is a start to... 26 miles that way is the finish. Uh, so, and I'm gonna be staying in Canal Park, which is the finish area. So I'll take some fun little pictures of that. The other thing I wanted to show you is, I got a rental car today, which is usually what I do when I drive around to do donor visits. And this is a car I got. <laughs> a Dodge Challenger. I love it. It's kind of fun. So anyway, uh, it's cool to look up the street uh, for the finish line, uh, the start line of Grandma's Marathon. We'll talk to you later. This is a Knife River, uh, up just past five miles uh, in the marathon. And uh, this is a really cool spot because this road right here is uh, goes out to the expressway where a lot of fans that drop their family members off at the start can come on down. So it's packed with people and it's five miles into the run. So the, the marathoners still hopefully feel good and uh, the energy at this area is great. Um, I ran my first marathon at Twin Cities in 1999 and uh, I blew up at mile 19 and had to walk most of the way back from that. Uh, my next marathon was Grandma's and that was in uh, 2007 I believe. Um, and I thought I would do a lot better. I trained better. Uh, however, I, I, uh, it was a hot day and I poured water over my head and it got in my shoes. I ended up getting blisters. Um, the, the thing that I've realized about marathoning is that you can do a lot of very good training or at least think you're doing a lot of good training and uh, things still need to come together on the day of or the day before the race. Um, a lot of things need to come together. So I just, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about those that are getting ready to run grandma's in a week and a half and uh, hoping that your training has gone well uh, because that obviously that needs to be good for you to run a good grandma's. But there's a lot of other things that go into it. And I, um, I think about uh, eating. I usually eat have three days of, uh, of my meals planned before a race so that I know that my stomach will be totally fine. Uh, you don't want to eat new foods the couple days before. Um, eat things that you're used to. What I did uh, two days before is I would eat uh, usually Chinese, like a stir fry that I make myself. Uh, mostly rice and then some vegetables and, uh, and chicken made in a wok. Uh, the day before, the, the evening before, I usually will have um, spaghetti and meatballs and, uh, and salad. But not too much salad because you don't want too much roughage. That kind of messes up your, your GI uh, if you're going to do a long run the next day, which 26 miles uh, qualifies for that. So I thought I'd, I just wanted to share a couple of thoughts around uh, my marathoning. I'll share a couple more stories in a bit. Talk to you later. I kind of see the 10 mile mark. Uh, if you're if you're really if you're ready for a marathon, this is kind of the warm up. 
uh, and now you start hitting double digits, you should still feel really easy. I usually run, uh, I, when I ran uh, grandma's a few times that I have, um, I ran with a pace group, which is always helpful so that you don't get out too fast. Um, and I usually try to try, uh, try to run the second half faster than my first half. Um, and even more specifically, my last 10K faster than my first 10K. And if I can do that, and I've done that in maybe a half a dozen races, um, those are my best six races that I've ever done. At about mile 15, you can see the finish line area, the aerial bridge in downtown Duluth. Um, that's a long way to be looking at the finish line from mile 15 to mile 26.2. Uh, so that just adds to the kind of uniqueness of Grandma's Marathon. For me, the 16 mile mark in a marathon is always really uh, kind of a key part. <clears throat> I call it the halfway point because 10 miles to go feels like still a lot. And the 13 mile mark 13 miles to go is still too far <laughs> for me to comprehend that I'm halfway done. Um, I've, I've actually joked sometimes that the 20 mile mark is about the halfway mark. Some days it feels like that. Uh, the, the last 10K is definitely the hardest if you're running it, uh, running it as for a PR or something. I'm up. I am up on top of Lemon Drop Hill. It's uh, in the 22 mile, uh, 22nd mile. And from up on top, it doesn't seem like that big of a hill. <clears throat> There's still an uphill a little ways up in the next quarter mile. Um, but because it's in the 22nd mile, <clears throat> any uphill is, is uh, traumatic. And, uh, and this one is, you look at it for almost a half a mile, I had a really tough time in my third marathon here. Uh, this this hill kind of disrupted my my good run. So here's a finish line for Grandma's marathon. Um, I'm down in Canal Park now, and uh, it's a great finish area. One of the things that I like the most about it is. Um, they've got lots of good food and if you can stick around afterwards like into the afternoon and evening they have quite a party around here um, the whole northern part of Minnesota comes out for this and a lot of people from the Twin Cities so it's a really cool place I'm gonna go for a run now um, we'll check in After the finish, which is just uh, 400 yards away from here, a lot of times I always put my Crocs in my finisher bag uh, so that I can take my running shoes off and socks off and just be barefoot in Crocs. And then I'll grab food and a beer, which they give you a ticket for. And then I usually walk down here and get into Lake Superior. And it's the best after the race on my legs that I've ever had because it's cold in there um, and if you sit in there for 10-15 minutes it's kind of like taking ice bath. Uh, and I've recovered really well after uh, after grandma's marathon now it's hard to do that when it's cold out uh, but if it's warm or hot it's a great way to to recover so beautiful place <laughs> 